guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Abby, and today we're looking at the propagations that I've got going. I think one of the best things about spring summertime is just having that confidence in propagating. And I propagate all year round and I don't normally have problems, but I will not see rapid growth in the roots or like any leaves or anything. But when you propagate in spring and summer, honestly, they, they just absolutely fly. Like the roots just, they just know. And I've also, actually been feeding the water with liquid gold leaf and I wouldn't normally feed the water I would just prop the plant put it in soil and then start giving it food and I'm not technically sure if that's the right thing to do but it seems to be really working for me so I'm gonna keep on doing it the majority of my propagations are in my front room it's just because I think they they need a lot less care and love because the water will literally just need changing once in a while. Um, so this is where we are. But this is the first one. And when I first potted this up into water, so when I first took the cuttings, it looked really bleak. It didn't look great. I was, I was kind of like low key, maybe regretting my decision. But this is exactly what I wanted. Like I wanted a neon pothos, really bushy, just like a really like compact plant. And honestly, I really love this. I love the way it looks. I wouldn't be too fussed about keeping it in water and just like, because I've kept pothos in water for like years before. Um, so I'm not in any rush to pot this up, but I haven't actually had a look at the roots yet. Um, <laughs> you just watch it will be rotten but um, there's obviously this is a, a plant pot there's no like glass it's obviously like just no natural light getting into it which when that happens obviously more algae builds up and there's more chance of rot in my opinion oh oh so that is a surprise to me that is honestly such a surprise and it actually reminds me, I think it was 2020. Right, let's go back to the health of these roots though. They're so happy. Like there's no rot on them. But I'm pretty sure in 2020, I did a few experiments where I put freshly cut um, props into a glass and then into something like this where no like light could get in. And the ones where the roots were growing in the dark were so much healthier and better. How did I forget that? maybe anyone else knows that's a thing but what obviously these plants are like incredibly hardy but i just yeah i'm really happy with that i'm gonna go put that back let it carry on and we're gonna be maybe putting it into soil soon but like i said i'm quite happy to just leave it in water but it does need a, it does need a water top up the next plant is this albo so it's a variegated monstera it's very very lightly variegated i cut this off a propagation so i was propagating um some plants in uh i think it was like maybe about a month ago and i took this because this particular cutting grew this leaf and this leaf and none of the other cuttings did and now those cuttings are potted up into soil so they're a, like a, a plant now um and i think that was the time where i cut off the node so that particular cutting i took this from will know will it's like a dead, like it won't give me any more like leaves, which is fine. I've got plenty of hours to go around. Um, but this is what it's doing. It's incredibly happy. This is the example of me saying like it's in a plastic pot and I changed the water on this. So the last one I changed the water every two weeks, if that, and the water was fine. I changed the water on this two days ago. Like it, it gets really green and algae like all over the plant um, quite quickly. But I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing for it. Um, so yeah, lots of secondary roots coming through there and it looks really happy. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking about selling this one. I actually think I have this listed on Facebook already, um, but I just have so many 
Albo props I just don't don't need anymore so I am selling this one if anyone is local and interested. The next one is this, it's my Rapidifor Tetrasperma um, and someone actually made a comment that I shouldn't put it in water, I should put it in moss and I explained to her my, I have really only ever 99.9% .9 propagated in water and I've never really had problems. Um, I've tried in moss and failed so many times up until the most recent one. Um, but it's doing well. It's got roots coming through. And this was only taken a week ago. Um, but you see those roots there are dry because the water has absolutely dipped down. So I need to find a pot a bit like the um, the Umpothos and put it in a pot because there's just so so many stems, so many... You know, so many things going on in there. It just needs some more space. Um, so I'm going to do that. And yeah, I mean, it's looking okay. I always found the way it was growing very strange. And it's going. I knew it was going to be a bit hard to place. But I mean, it's okay. It doesn't help that the top part of the plant doesn't get water. Because I've not filled it up. But yeah. Okay, it now lives in this. It's just another pot that I had that had no drainage holes in it. So, um, yeah, it's definitely going to have some more space. It's absolutely full to the brim of water because the roots that were growing were so far up the top of the stem. Um, like, I can't even show you. Like, it's literally just, like, up to the top. Um, so I'm going to put that back in place and, yeah, see what happens. There was a cutting in here and I have a feeling it's one of these maybe it wasn't that one there's a cutting in here that looked like it was on the brink of death and i thought i'd prop it to see how it would go so it's probably this one although i think that was one of my favorite cuttings but we'll see um but yeah it's doing okay doesn't look happy but it has been deprived of water for god knows how long so that was that was my fault <laughs> This is the second to last um, cutting I'm going to show you, but the last cutting in water. So this, I had another one, but I sold it. But I took three leaves from my one of my tallest elbows because it had hit the ceiling. I thought I caught it before I caused any damage. And I wouldn't normally cut a plant or take a cutting when a new leaf was unfurling because this happened. Um, so it just, it just didn't like it. I've taken like the top half of it, but it just looks like the whole half of that leaf is just going to die. If not the whole leaf, it's just not, it's not happy. It seems to have lost its will to live. So that's a bit gutting, but the, the root growth is okay. It's like, you know, it's on its way. The one I actually sold had grown a substantial amount of roots already which was crazy like it had like doubled the length but it is growing um and there's like looks like a little bit of like rot at the end of there which i'll get off but yeah it's okay um i've got this one obviously i'm keeping the, the one that i'm unsure about the the new leaf and stuff like it's not growing in well but the healthy one is also on Facebook for sale, although I think that will go today. Um, but like I said, I don't need any more, so that's why we're getting rid of this one. And then lastly, this is the only one that's in moss because it's not my preferred method. I've got these two, which I have given you an update on pretty recently. Um, that had come out. I had saved it from this part, which it was just stuck in there. And that leaf was completely black and rotten. So eventually that little bumpy bit here that you see just there, that's where a new leaf will, leaf will grow. In terms of the root growth, same really, nothing crazy. It's kind of looking like it needs a little bit of a water. Um, but I do like that the moss is normally brown, but it's green where it faces the sunlight. So... I just feel like the moss is healthier when it's when it's soaked in water, poured out, rather than, you know, drip, like sprayed or drip, kind of like fed water. But yeah, all in all, it's not bad. I have just soaked it. I've just poured 
water in it until it went to the top, let it settle for a little bit and then poured it out. But you can tell it's just so much happier now, like the actual rooms have water. But yeah, I think I might sell these two because, yeah, I don't know. I just honestly have so many. I've got Mega Monstera, I've got the two really big ones. I've got this one, I've got a potted one with three leaves. I've got that massive potted one, which I did a few weeks ago. Um, I've got the one next to that purple sunset um, uh, painting. And then I've got the um, cuttings that I just showed you with the half of the, the, the new cuttings. I've just got so many and I don't really need that many. And I've got loads of tie as well. Although I've never propped my tie constellation ever. Ever. Like in the four or five years I've ever had Monstera, I've never um, cut my own tie. So just shows the growth speed is so different. That's it for the video. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you're water propagating or moss propagating or perlite, whatever, down in the comments below. I'm considering doing a few Hoya, which I haven't done in so long. Um, but I feel like I must do at least one because you'll see in the up and coming video why I need to do that. Um, but I just love propagating. I honestly, it's like free plants. Like that um, Pothos, the neon one. I love the mother plant so much, but the way it was bolding on the top and... I just wanted one that was like really bushy and full at the top, a bit like my Enjoy. I cut them a month or so ago and now I have what I wanted, you know? It's just, they're so versatile, it's so easy. You can do as much, as little as you want. Like I say, free plants and who doesn't love free plants? So yeah, I really hope you enjoyed watching and I will see you guys soon. Bye.